name is Luke Meyer. I uh, work here at Thrive3. I'm our lead uh, skills trainer. I've been doing player development training for roughly 10 years, full time. Uh, I started as a college player and I started to get into player development. Uh, and the biggest thing that kind of drove me to stay in that path was the fact that I thought I could impact players uh, on an individual level and on a team level. A lot of this stuff that we started to teach the players was stuff that I never learned until I got into college or never learned at all. And uh, I know I would have been a way, way better player. I would have had a better career had I worked on those things and been introduced to those things at a younger age. Uh, so we've been in Milwaukee since about 2009. We've had this gym since 2012. And we work out, uh, we have year-round training programs, a lot of middle school, high school players. And in the spring and summer, uh, we've got a lot of college and pro guys that come back uh, while they're in town. Uh, so what I want to give you guys today is, uh, is really heavy on footwork. And uh, you know, one of the most common things that we see, and it doesn't matter if it's a sixth grade kid or uh, you know, a, a guy at Wisconsin, footwork is always an issue. And if you have players that are not as athletic, footwork and skill is going to give them the opportunity to compete against players that are more athletic, uh, more physically gifted than they are. If you have players that are athletic, that are physically, you know, big, strong, right, footwork is something that can give them a chance, footwork and skill is something that can give them a chance to be special, really special. Because no matter who you are as a player, at some point in your career, you're going you're gonna to run up against somebody that's bigger, faster, stronger than you, and you can't just rely on your natural talents. You've got to have skill in there uh, to give yourself the best chance. All right, so the first thing we're going to do uh, is just kind of talk about some footwork stuff. And it's, um, it's stuff that you can apply in any situation, any drill that you run in practice where you've got your guys working on either triple threat or uh, you know, breaking defenders down off the dribble, it's universal. So it's more a points of emphasis than it really is a drill to start with. So uh, when you're playing out a triple threat, can I get one of you guys to come out here? That's good, there you go. Uh, can I get a ball too? When you're playing out a triple threat, you can be right at the top of the key. You can be on D. It doesn't matter if it's triple threat or off the dribble. Uh, we always want to emphasize attacking ankle to ankle and shoulder to hip. So if I'm out of, I forgot your name. What's your name? Justin. If I'm going at Justin, right? If I step to the side, he's in front. Right? If I don't cover ground with my first step, He's in front, all right? And those are two of the main, main uh, problems you see with somebody's footwork. Doesn't matter if it's the same thing, off a dribble, if I go out here, he's still in front, all right? So we want to attack ankle to ankle, right? So if I can get, don't move it. I'm beating you, man. If I can get ankle to ankle, he's got two choices right here from this position. Number one is to drop his foot, and if I take a good angle, I beat him to the rim. The, the only other he op option he has if I get ankle to ankle, shoulder to hip, is to slide over, hit me, and bump me, and it's a foul. All right, so if you're going off the dribble, out of triple threat, doesn't matter. You get ankle to ankle, shoulder to hip, you can beat that defender. We want to get our chest to the floor on any drive. Triple threat, off the dribble, doesn't matter. Our chest to the floor, if I can get here, you got to let me beat you, man. If I can get here, Right? And get this shoulder down. Right? It allows me to sever the angle and get back in front of him, take him out of the play. Even if my steps are good, if my chest is up, there's nothing to hold him from cutting me off. Right? And that's one thing that we always work on. And it's not necessarily uh, you know, a, a, a thing that, kind of an old school thing, is always like, get your players to play low. You got to play low. You got to play low. Well, you do but you don't always play low, right? You, like you catch the basketball and you're in triple threat or you're off the dribble, right? You're not gonna be like 
down here. This isn't like a, a position where you can do anything out of. What you have to be able to do is drop your chest down, whether it's off the dribble or triple threat, and get to that spot and finish through the drive, take a good angle. All right? So those, that's the first key. Ankle to ankle, shoulder to hip. The second one, and this is more for off the dribble, is going to be a seal step. So whatever, whatever your dribble move is, you want every step to serve a purpose. So when I'm going at Justin, it doesn't matter if I, if I go between the legs, right? I want to hit my move. My next step out of my move should be a seal where I'm ankle to ankle. And it doesn't matter if it's a between the legs, if you cross it, seal, inside out, seal, right? Whatever the move is, that next step's got to be a seal. A lot of times, players who, who have inefficient footwork, right, they get here and there's never that, that seal step. And if you're quick, you can beat a slow guy without that. But again, you're working to beat guys, beat players that are the best. And you've got to have great footwork and you've got to be efficient. Every step you take should serve a purpose, right? Um, we just get like three guys out here with the ball. So the first thing we're going to do, we just call them dance steps. And this is the most basic way to break down uh, triple threat footwork. Um, let's go, let's just, you guys just get in the middle right here in the, in the line. Let's go one guy, I'm going to have you face this wall, uh, that wall. We'll just space this way, guys. So one guy will face here. Yeah, that's fine. Turn this way, Justin. Turn this way so they can see. Ernest. Yep. Okay. Now, so the first step that we're going to talk about is a strong, uh, strong side step. So you got a, a lefty pivot foot. Okay, I want you guys to get, get the ball in triple threat, tuck back on your shoulder, chest down, right? Ball's on your hip. I'm going to give you commands. So when you're teaching something, you can break it down into the smallest steps so you know they're doing it correctly throughout the whole thing. If you just tell them to sweep and step, you have no control over the details in it, where they're stepping, how they're sweeping. All right? So the first man is going to be sweep. When I say sweep, you're going to take the ball down below your knees, drop your chest, and bring it back up to your right hip. Yep, try to keep your chest down. When I say step, you're going to step straight forward with your right foot. When I say dribble, you're going to pound one dribble in front of your foot. Okay, so then we'll go reset. All right, so ready? Sweep. S step. Ball's going to be on there. Dribble. All right, reset. Ball on your left hip. Sweep. Step. You got a lefty pivot foot, Justin. Ernest, you got a lefty pivot foot. Yeah, I want the ball on your right side. Dribble. I'm left handed, switch around for me. You got to have both, man. All right, reset. Ball on your left hip. Left hip. Sweep. Step. Dribble. Reset. Sweep. Step. Dribble. All right, next one. Get back, reset. I'm just going to say, ready, go. So you got sweep, step, and then dribble all on your own. Ready, go. Ready, go, go. All right, good. All right, next one. You still got a lefty pivot foot. We're going to switch it up. We're going crossover step. All right, so your commands are going to be balls on your right hip to start. We'll sweep it to the left. When I say cross, you're going to reach. All right, across, trying to straight line out, and then dribble out in front. Get that dribble out in front of your foot. Dribble where you're going, not where you're at. Sweep, step. Dribble. Keep your chest down. Chest down. Ready. Sweep. Step. Dribble. All right, now you start to see some. Uh... Get that ball, Justin. Like when they're going, they're starting to turn. So they're sweeping the ball. They're turning here, and their dribble's between their legs, right? If, if we're turned like this, like a lot of the players will naturally do that because they think they got to they gotta, uh, protect the basketball like this. But you can't beat anybody like this. So you want your shoulders like facing where you're going. Don't turn your body. We're protecting the basketball by getting your chest down, getting your chest to the floor. All right? You turn, Ernest. 
right? So your shoulders should face there, not there. All right, ready. Sweep, step, dribble. Out in front, dribble in front of your foot. Sweep, step, dribble. One more. Sweep, step, dribble. Out in front. If, if, why do you got to dribble out in front? That's the way I'm going? Yeah. Okay, so do what you just did. Take your step, now take your dribble. Right? When you guys, when you're playing out of, out of triple threat, your feet give you the advantage. Your first step gives you the advantage. The ball gives you separation. So you get an advantage, but you dribble here, you don't get any separation. Right? So you got to sweep, step, and then dribble for separation. Right? Now, on your own. So you're going to sweep, cross, go. Out in front. There you go. Hit that dribble in front of your foot. Hit that dribble in front of your foot. There you go. Good, Justin. All right, good. Okay, last one we'll do, we'll break down, uh, is jab. All right? Uh, teaching points on your jab. Just, Justin's guarding me, facing this room. All right? A lot, of, a lot of players, they do too much with, uh, when they try to jab. Too big a step, too much action with the ball. If you watch uh, pro guys, NBA guys, one of the things that they do better than anybody else is they're efficient with their fakes. They're, they're quick and short. There's no wasted motion, right? So when we jab, I want to jab at his ankle, okay? So I want to get him to drop. If I, if I go to the side, would you drop down that way if I jab this way? He steps, he's still in front. If I jab his ankle, I get him to drop, and then I can get his high foot. Once I get his high foot, he's dead. Okay, so teaching points for the jab. We want a short, violent jab. It's not a big, it's not a step. It's just short and quick. With the basketball, you're bringing the ball to the inside of your knee. It's short and quick. The ball does not go outside the frame of your body. We're not faking all the way out here. So it's going to be jab, cross, dribble. And the same thing, we're getting ankle to ankle on that first step. You guys got that? Jab, cross, Dribble, hard, violent fake, nice and tight. Keep it in your body. Ready, jab, cross, dribble. Yep, don't re once you guys jab, don't reload this step. You're gonna go jab, and then right into your cross. Ready, yep, jab, cross. Get that ankle, dribble. There you go, one more time, ready. Jab, cross, dribble. All right, on your own, go. Yep, get that chest down, chest down, chest down, chest down. You're too high, bro. Don't pull back. Boom, then down. No, here, come back. All right, hold up, hold up. Okay, so you got a jab, right? I drop. Nah, look where you're at. Look where your chest is. Is up, right? Okay. You got to bend at the weight, not your, no, 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 don't. Here, that's the thing. When you get your chest down, you don't have to bend here. You have to bend here at the waist. Okay, so you're gonna jab, just go slow, jab. Now get that chest down and take that step across. So you're right here, right? So now, if you can get shoulder to hip, you got me. Okay. All right, you're up like this, I'm still in front. Okay. All right, so you gotta get your chest down. All right, so those are, uh, that's, a, that's the first thing that we do with the player to get their footwork right, is to break it down. And I know, I know it's simple, but you can see it's not that easy to do right, all right? Uh, Next thing we'll do is a, uh, it's called partner sweeps drill. Let's go, uh, can we get two, uh, two more guys? All right, so you guys come right here. We'll get two guys right here. We'll get two guys right here. One guy out in front. So you'll be right in front of them, about 15 feet. Yep, right here. You'll be behind Justin. Yep, you guys are in a line and you're in front. You only need one ball. First guy's got a ball. All right, so. Uh, throw it out to the guy in, in the middle. I'll take your spot. What's your name, buddy? David. Devin. David. David. All right. So you're going to throw the ball to the guy in front. Now, first one, we're going to give them a read. You're going to catch it. As soon as you catch it, ball goes to your left hip. We're going to do a strong side step. So you got lefty pivot foot. So you're going to sweep it to the right, step with your right foot, and then push that dribble out. Okay? So you catch it, get on your hip. Now, this, this guy's coming up. 
He's going to jump stop and put his arm out. Now you've got to get your chest down and get under my arm. All right, you're going to go two dribbles, jump stop, reverse pivot, reverse pivot, back. Nope. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Throw it. Next guy's up. Jump stop. You're not closing out, right? Jump stop. Get your arm down. Get this one out. He's got to get under your arm. Get up tight. Under. Two dribbles. Jump stop. Reverse pivot. Throw it back. Okay? You guys got that? Yeah. Go slow to start. Okay? So, got the guy getting your arm out. All right, your purpose is, number one, make sure that guy's attacking in a straight line, ankle to ankle, and they're getting their chest down. All right? So they got to get under your arm. Okay? You guys got it? Go. Go, 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 go. Jump stop. Arm. One arm out. One arm out. You're at the end of the line. Next guy's up. Yep. Go. Throw it. Go. Go. Follow your pass. Jump stop. Arm out. Good. Strong side step. Next guy's up. Justin, you're up. You... That's fine. Go. Go. One arm. Hold. Time out. Hold up. Guys, you're not, you're not playing D. Yeah. Not. Well, no. You're not playing D. You're just giving him a read. All right? Your, your job is not to guard him. Your job is to make him better. Your job is to make him attack ankle to ankle, sweep the ball low. All right, so you follow your pass, come up, jump stop, get him down, good. Next guy's up, next guy's up, right away. Yep, follow your pass, jump stop, under his arm. Go, under his arm, jump stop, under his arm. All right, good. All right, that's good, that's good. You come back out. All right, now we'll do the same thing, crossover step. Okay, so after you guys pass it, you jump stop, put your right arm out. All right, so you guys are crossover step. Right foot, ankle to ankle, shoulder to hip. Yep. All right, push that dribble out, though. You guys got it? All right, go. Sweep. Push that dribble out, fellas. Push that dribble out. All right, hold up. Almost everybody's dribble is right here. All right, you got to go. Dribble where you're going, not where you're at. Right here, you get me. All right, so as soon as you catch it, get closer. Okay. All right? Slide over a little bit so I can go through. All right? You're sweeping it through. This next dribble, right, is for separation. You should be able to get here in one dribble. Pound your second dribble, pivot back. All right? You want to come out here, David? All right, a couple more times. Ready? Go. Sweep. Move. Push that dribble out. Sweep and push. Sweep and push. Push. Sweep it below your knees. Drop your chest down. All right, good. All right, last part of the drill. I decide which way you go. So I can put either arm out. You got to read me and sweep it. Get under whatever arm I put out. You guys got that? So I'm throwing it. Jump stop. Whoa, drop that chest down. How many of you guys play college ball? You all play high school ball? How many of you guys have ever worked on this? Okay, so that's my point, right? It's footwork, like footwork. All right? It makes a big difference, okay? Uh, let's go through it. So you got to read it. Play, go. Good, straight out, straight up the floor. Don't angle out, straight up. Sweep, get that chest down, get under his arm. Get low, chest down, chest down. There you go, good Justin, that's better. Sweep, good. Sweep, all right, good. Okay, uh, another variation you can do with this drill. So you wanna progress, right? Like, if I, if I was working on this with you guys, we would stay right here and keep working on it, make sure our full work's good. You're confident in your player's footwork, their ability to do this. You can space, you can uh, add in something else, add in a finish. So let's go. Why don't you guys go down under the rim down there? Leave the ball, yeah. Right under the rim, line under the rim. Pick any spot on the floor, wherever you want to work from. Be the same drill. So you throw me the ball. No, you guys are behind him. Yep. Throw me the ball. You close out, jump stop. Give me a read, All right? Whatever finish you want to work on, whatever, uh, you know, move. But you're, you're keying in on triple threat. Don't go to this before you do that. Because as soon as you add finishing or shooting, guys start doing weird stuff. 
They forget about all the footwork stuff that you just spent a half hour working on, and now you're, all they're worried about is getting the ball in the basket, and they're going to do what they're comfortable doing. So you got to progress with it. You can't just throw it at them. Uh, it's all about what you emphasize. doesn't matter what the drill is. It's about what you emphasize in the drill. Okay? Uh, you guys want to do that a couple times? I want you, hey, so I want you to get to the rim in one dribble. You can't dribble twice. You've got to cover ground. All right? Give him a read, so either way, either way. Go. There you go. Good. Yep, either way. Get to the rim in one dribble. You gotta push your dribble out. Get there in one. Get there in one. Get there in one. Push it out. There you go. There you go, good. Push it out. There you go. All right, good. All right, so that's just, you can do whatever finish, you know, whatever, uh, whatever dribble move you want, you can add into that. All right, next thing we're gonna work on is dribbling footwork. Now the stuff, all the stuff that I wanna give you guys today, you should be able to do no matter what you have as far as equipment or space. All right, as long as you have balls and bodies, you can do this stuff. All right, so uh, I'm gonna have all you guys come down here on the baseline. We'll get uh, everybody with the basketball. Everybody with the basketball, just space out on the baseline. You can do this for a warm up. Yep, just space out a little bit. You can do this for a warm up. Uh, everything in player development is about repetition and consistency. All right, so this warm up, once these guys know what they're doing, you can get roughly for each move that you do. You're basically going to get um, like 120 dribble moves. So we do five moves, so that's 600 dribble moves in a day. You can get this in almost five minutes once you get it going. So, you know, if you're practicing four days a week, you spend five minutes on this, you know, that's 2,400 dribble moves in, in, a, in a week. Do that for a season, that's what, 96, like a, a four months, 96. 100, almost 10,000. So you're going to get improvement. But it's all about that repetition. It's about those invisible improvements. All right, you get a little bit better, you get a little bit better, you get a little bit better each day, and it turns into a major improvement over the long haul. It doesn't just happen overnight. And it, it's a process, but you have to be committed to it. Um, all right, so first one. Now this kind of, we'll do like a, a basic version, we'll do a little bit more advanced version. So we're going to start off, normally we do it sideline to sideline, but since you guys are lined up, we're going to go to half court. Okay, so you start on the baseline, and we're working on footwork too, okay? So you're going to take one pound dribble, I want you to make an inside out. Now on your inside out, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hard pound, get the basketball back up above your knee by your waist. When you make your inside out, you're bringing the ball to the middle of your body, and you're jabbing at the same time. So you're bringing the ball in, short, quick jab, straight to the side. So we jab, as soon as we jab, you're pushing the ball back, down and out to the outside. Okay, so you got pound, inside out, pound, inside out. You got 20, as soon as you finish your 20 stationary, you're moving to half court. You should be able to get about 10 to 15 inside out. So you're not trying to cover ground, you're trying to rep it out. You guys got that? So we'll go right hand down, Wait for everybody to get to half court, and then we'll come back left hand. So 20 and go. Go! Short, quick jab. Don't step. Straight out. Don't step. Short and quick. Good. There you go. Get that ball over more. Go ahead. Get it to the middle. Yep. Get it over. Sell it. There you go. Rep it out. Rep it out. Rep it out. Pull that ball back outside after you sell it. Get the ball in the middle, get the ball in the middle, farther. Get the ball in the middle, right? Roll it into the middle, get to the middle. There you go, pound, take a pound, take a pound. Pound, inside out, pound, and hold up. Yeah, right? It should be. All right, now, you guys just go to half court. All right, left hand. All right, now, say, like, a lot of these guys, uh, Kessier Bubba, the basketball is right here. 
It's not selling any type of move. You guys got to get the ball to the midline of your body and then pull it back out, right? You're faking right and then coming back left. You got to sell it. Now, when you're selling a move, it's not just the ball. Right? We're using the ball, your feet with the jab, use your shoulders and your eyes. So you pound it, sell that move like you're going to go to the right. The more things you sell with, the more effective your fake is. Okay, so we got left hand. Pound it 20 and go. 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 Come on, quick, quick, pound it, quick, quick, quick. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Come on, burn it out, burn it out. There you go, there you go. Jab, jab, make sure you use your feet, jab. As soon as you get your 20, go. 20 and go. There you go, good, Ernest. There you go. Quick jab. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. You keep going forward. Keep going forward. There you go. <laughs> Alright, good. Guys, this is just a warm-up, man. It's a warm-up? This is a warm-up. Let's get it in. Alright, next one. We're gonna cross it. Okay? So you cross it. Pound, cross, pound, cross. You got 20 crosses. Now all your dribbles. Alright, we want ball quickness and everything. We, you can't just dribble with your hand and your wrist, right? Every dribble you take, we want to punch through the ball. It doesn't matter what the move is, right? So on your pounds, you're punching through the ball, arm through the ball. Punch, punch. Ball's below your knees on the cross, low and wide, okay? So as soon as you get your 20 stationary, then we're going to zigzag down, right? So don't worry about covering a lot of ground. You're going to pound, then cross it. Pound, cross. Alright, so I want you guys to plant your outside foot, cross, and step through. We talked about that seal step, right? Cross, and then here's your seal step. Pow, cross. Straight across, can't cross it out. Go! There you go. Come on, hard pounds, hard pounds. Keep it above your, uh, below your knees, or above your, uh, above your knees, below your waist. Come on, go, 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 quicker. Keep it lower. Below your waist, below your waist. Don't let it get above your waist. Just 20 total, 20 total and go, 20 total. Come on, pound cross, pound cross. Keep going, quicker, keep going, keep going. Quicker, quicker, quicker. There you go. Like with your feet. Okay. So you're going, you're going like, like you're doing it right, but you gotta go like, like quicker steps, like you're moving, like somebody cuts you off, you gotta snap that cross over and go. Gotcha. All right, now we'll go, uh, we'll go down and back normally, we'll go between the legs now. All right, so here's your footwork on the between the legs. Anytime, uh, Justin, you wanna come out here again? Anytime you go between the legs, all right, we got to make sure we're turning our, our feet and our hips. If I change between the legs, I want to go left here. If my feet and hips are pointed right, I can't go that way. So I'm going to have to do some sort of skip or step to get my body set to go left. So when you guys are going, we want to turn here. So my first step is that seal step. Okay. So when you guys are doing a stationary, you're going to start the ball on your right hand. Your right foot's forward, it's gonna pay, uh, your feet are pointed, both feet are pointed towards that exit right there. Okay, so everybody get like that. So you take your pound dribble first, then you switch your feet, point to that exit, pound it through. Keep your left foot forward, pound, turn and push, or punch it through. You guys got that? So you got 20 total, right? Not 20 each hand. All right, what are you doing as soon as you finish your stationary? Zigzag, quick. So pound through, pound through. Right? You're not worried about covering ground. We want hard pound dribbles. We want hard change of directions. Hard between the legs. Is it a reset dribble between? So like here? a pound? Yep, one pound. Here. Yeah, so it's between, pound, okay. between, pound. And stationary. You take a pound between each one. Right foot forward, ball on your right hand. Go. Get those feet turned. So get those feet turned. Don't turn them around. Stop, 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 stop. All right, here's what most of you guys are doing. 
You go through, your feet are already switched when you're taking this pound dribble. You gotta keep your foot forward, you pound, your, your ball's in your left hand, your left foot's forward on the pound. Then switch, pound. Switch, pound. Switch, pound. All right, so you don't switch your feet until after the pound dribble. We don't wanna be switched already, because that defeats the purpose, All right? Go! You switch, you switch, you switch. Okay, okay. Right foot forward, Damn. pound, switch. Damn. Keep it up, pound, switch, pound, switch. There you go. Justin, you switch, there you go, good. There you go, good. Other foot forward, other foot. So ball's in your right hand, right foot forward. So pound it, switch your feet, and put it through. So you got almost like skip. Switch, there, pound, oh, don't switch early. There you go. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going, keep going, quick, 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 pound it, pound it. All right, last one, you're going behind the back. All right, so again, we would do that two times. You do all these two times. Behind the back, once your pound, good stance, pound dribbles in front of your body. All right, you gotta get used to bringing the ball back and hitting the move. We don't wanna dribble back here. It's not realistic to a game. All right, so you pound it in front, bring it back, put it right under your butt. You're not wrapping it, all right? Hard under your butt. Pound, change, pound, change. Okay, as soon as you go, you got one dribble, right under your butt, hard pound. All right, so that, you're under pressure, the ball's protected that way. Right, you can wrap it in like a full court situation where you got space, but if you're getting dogged, all right, you gotta protect the ball. Okay, you guys got that? 20 and go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going. Finish, 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 finish. Go punch to the ball, punch to the ball. Keep going, keep going, there you go, keep going. You got it, you got it. There you go, keep moving forward, keep moving forward. Don't let your feet get parallel. All right, now, next one we're gonna take out, this is a little bit more advanced. We're gonna take out the stationary portion of it, we're gonna get moving a little bit, and we're working on our dribble move, but we're working on changing pace and changing your level. Changing your pace and changing your level. All right, so the first one is, uh, actually, let's go. is a dribble jab, okay? So it's the same side move. So basketball's in my right hand. All right, I'm going slow. When I hit my move, I'm gonna jab straight out to the left. All right, at the same time as my jab hits, I want a pound to hit, all right? So you guys are like dropping your hips and pounding it down, okay? So yeah, so like you're, you gotta break somebody down, right? Not in and out, it's straight down. It's so the same footwork, but the, the ball's different, right? So you're gonna pound it, jab, and then step forward with your right foot. That's your seal step. So you jab, like if you got a clock on the floor, I jab on the nine, and then I step through on the 12. All right, straight forward. So you guys are just gonna go uh, to the baseline, right? So you're gonna take a couple dribbles to slow down, hit the move. Drop your hips down, time out that jab and the dribble. Go. Good. Short, quick jab. Short, quick jab. Good. Remember, we don't need a big jab, right? Keep that jab violent. Short and quick. It's not a step. It's a jab. Okay, take it back left hand. Left hand. Go. Justin, Justin, make sure you're... you're your jab is good, but then your next step is always it's here. Always, okay, okay. Like to the side, instead of. Okay. All right, so then we'll, uh, we'll work on a counter. So your, uh, Justin's guarding me, girls ball. All right, I gotta break him back up a little bit. I'm gonna break him down, I hit my pound jab. He cuts me off, all right? So I'm gonna jab with the left, I step, 
Right, he cuts it off. Boom. Cross it, and then go. Nice, right? Because the girl's ball, man. Okay. Yeah. You can't tell, man? That's fine. You can't keep it. All right, so that's, that's the move. You can go back, Jay. So take your time. I want you guys to slow to fast again. So you're slow, pound jab. As soon as you plant that foot, you're snapping the ball over. Switch hands. Pound jab, cross. Got it? Go! Good. Switch hands, switch hands. Good. Good. Okay. So that's pound jab and then a counter. Pound jab cross. Next one. We're going to work out a little bit more changing speeds and what we call a float. This is uh, becoming way more common uh, in the NBA where guys handling the ball, whatever they'll do, Right, they're kind of float from side to side, and they're they're reading their defender. They're looking for a gap. Right, and the like uh, Steph Curry, when he uses this, the the terminology that they use is he's he's taking control of his defender. So it might look like he's just you know doing random stuff with the basketball, on the top or whatever. But he's, every one of those moves has a purpose. He's figuring out where that guy's feet are, how he's reacting to those movements, and then when he makes his move, he can get to his spot, okay? So you guys are gonna, we're gonna uh, float cross, okay? So you're gonna start ball in your right hand, we're crossing the ball low, you're almost skipping out to the side. You plant and load on your outside foot. So I load, drop on my left, and I snap it back. Float to the right. Load. Cross. All right, you guys got that? So you're changing your speed and your level. Go. Come on, hit the move. Change your speed, hit the move. Good, Ernest. No pound dribbles on these. These are all moves. There's no, no rhythm dribbles, no pound dribbles on these. One motion. All right, next one. We're going to go float cross, right to left, plant, and then we're going between the legs, coming back. Cross, between, cross, between. Got it? Load on that outside foot and hit the move hard. Go. Cross. No dribbles, no rhythm. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's it. Good. Yep. Side to side. You're not trying to really go forward, right? So you cross, plant, through. All right? Yep. Yeah. All right? So that's the first one, or second one. We do that right hand, and then left hand coming back. The next one we'll do is float cross, behind the back. So it's the same thing, we're just switching the moves. Snap it over, float to the left, plant, go behind. Float to the right. Ooh. Got it? Go! All right, that's good uh, on the ball and full work stuff. Um, you guys can sit down. Good job. Good job, man. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. Anybody have questions on any of that stuff? Anybody full work, ball handling? Any questions? All right. Last thing I want to touch on real quick is uh, shooting, and it's something that. Uh, we always get questions on, we always have uh, kind of come up. So, first thing, um, I want to kind of try to go through this stuff quick 
and then answer any questions that you might have. Some myths that we consistently see, or misconceptions. Number one, feet pointed directly at the basket. Five years ago, I would have had every player I come in do that. Totally gone away from that. The reason being is when you turn, if I'm a right-handed shooter, my feet are square. If I'm going to bring the ball straight up, it's very hard to shoot the basketball straight without some type of twist or turn in your shot. When you turn your feet, it allows you to shoot the ball much straighter and in a more relaxed motion. If you think about uh, throwing a dart, right? You want to throw a dart in a straight line to hit the target. You don't square your feet up and try and keep your elbow in and throw it like that, right? You angle your feet and you aim with your hip and shoulder and everything is straight on a line, right, to your target. The same thing with shooting. Now, each player is different. Give me a, let's get like, who's got a ball? Come out here. I want you guys, everybody go to the top of the key. All right, I want you to toss the ball. We got one more, anybody else got a ball? Get one more. I want you to toss, toss the ball from right here and I just want you to shoot a shot, get your rebound. I just want you to, got, hold on, hold on. Watch these guys' shots, okay? Watch how each one of these guys shoots the ball. Go ahead. One more. There you go. Somebody make one. All right, good. All right, you guys sit down. Thank you. So each one of those guys' shots is different. And one thing that I first started, if I was going to change a player's shot, I had a, a very specific picture of what that player's shot should be regardless of who they were. Over the last 10 years doing this, that's, uh, my mind has completely changed on that. Each player's shot's a little bit different, and I think you can take certain things uh, from each of their shots and make them consistent. It's not one, one form fits all. You've got to kind of figure out what they do and you can tweak things within that to make them more consistent. Right? Um, I'll talk about that a little more. Number two, myth, shooting the basketball above your head. You do have to get the ball above your head. The problem that happens is when you try to start your shot above your head. Kids start getting, or players get into like seventh grade, eighth grade, start to mature a little bit. People get in their head that they need to start shooting the ball above their head. Okay, it totally messes up their shots because they're not strong enough to start the basketball up here and shoot it, and there's no rhythm in a shot like that. Instead of that, what we want to do is get our players to, once they catch the basketball, we're going to have them tuck it to their shot pocket, or some people call it a rhythm dip. So you bring the ball down a little bit, and then you're bringing the ball up above your head and keeping your shot smooth, where you have power. If you teach a kid to shoot like that when they're in fifth grade, they won't have to change the shot the rest of their life. All right? So you can't start above your head. It's, it's impossible to shoot the ball well and with rhythm, and if you look at any good shooter, none of them will do that. All right? uh, that kind of goes in line with just keeping the ball high. We want to start it lower rhythm dip or get it to your shot pocket and then lift it up. And the last thing is always like, we need, he needs a quicker release. He needs a quicker release. There's not a lot of things. You can do some stuff to get a player a quicker release, but as far as their actual shot, there's not a lot that you can do. What you can do is their, work on their footwork. So when they're catching the basketball, can, uh, you want to pass to me, Ernest? The pro like, come out here, bro. When, um, the problem a lot of times is that they're stepping, they're catching it, they're finishing their step into their shot, and that's what's making their shot slow. So whether you're hopping, one, two, whatever your full work is, we want your feet almost down on the catch. So I'm stepping, right? My right foot is, is like down as soon as the basketball is in my hand. And if you watch guys, like Steph Curry in particular, 
he's, br he's, br he's bringing the ball to a shot pocket and coming up with the basketball before this foot even gets down. So he's already like starting to bring the ball up before that right foot comes down. That's why he gets, I mean, his shot is quick, but that's a bigger reason why he gets the ball off so quickly. Um, thanks, Ernest. All right, so that's a big thing is footwork into the, into the shot for quickness, not the shot itself. Um, so if you're gonna change a player's shot, and like it's super hard as a high school coach because you have such limited time, you have a couple options. First one is a complete overhaul. You take the kid's shot, you completely change it. That option requires a tremendous amount of work and consistency. You're talking about months and months of form shooting, spot shooting, to groove those mechanics. In my experience, I've only had like three players that have been committed enough to ever do that. Most of your players will tell you they are and then they won't do the work. And it just messes them up worse. All right, so you know your guys, you know if they're gonna do it or not. That's a call that you can make. Second, second way, this is typically what I do. Pick out two or three things in their existing shot that you can tweak to make them a more consistent shooter. The most common ones are their feet, making sure their feet are good, balance, so they're not drifting right or left, they're not twisting or turning a lot, or they're not jumping forward or backward, right? They're balanced. Third thing is their follow through. If you can get them to follow through straight to the rim on balance, they're gonna make more shots automatically. And to go along with that, is shooting the ball higher. I don't care what your form is, if you shoot the ball, most, most players have flat trajectories on their shot, they shoot the ball higher, automatically your chances of making the shots go up. All right, there, if you shoot a flat shot, you've gotta be basically perfect with your, with your shot to have it go in. It's either gonna front iron or back iron out if it's not perfect. You get the ball up, you've got more margin for air for that ball to come down inside the rim. Um, the last option is to take a player's shot and watch what they do when they make shots. Figure out their shot. So then when you coach them, you have cues like, you know, maybe, maybe a player, every time they make a shot, um, whatever it is, they, uh, they stick their follow through straight or they have their feet a little bit turned. Whatever it is on each individual form, you figure out how they make shots the best and then coach them that way. So those are, those are kind of three things that we'll use. And it depends on the player, it depends on their commitment, all those, but. Um, last thing on, on changing a shot. If you're really changing something, you have to isolate it first. So we always follow a progression. The first thing is form shooting. So we're right here, right? Isolating the follow through, hand position, good lift on the basketball. All right, so maybe you make 50 or 100. You step back. Now we're working on our shot pocket, making sure we're lifting the ball, straight follow through, whatever you're keying in on. When you do it this way, you eliminate the other variables that come with shooting, dribbling, running, being on balance, all, right? all those things are variables. We go to form shooting, it's 100% form. You don't have to worry about any of those things. That's the only way to really change a shot. All right, so you work your way back, you have five spots. One, two, three, four, and then probably five right here. If you have a, a player, their, their form is getting better, they're more consistent, we'll go all the way back to the top of the key. If you can shoot the bat, and we'll do this with players like trying to build their range. You can't jump on any of these shots. And if you can shoot a three-pointer without jumping in good balance, when you can actually jump, you have movement, momentum into your shot, like it's like a 15-footer. It's like a layup. It's a great way to build up a shot. It also helps because from here without a jump, you cannot have any type of hitch in your shot. Like unless you're super strong, you're not going to be able to get the ball to the rim. So you got a player with a hitch, a good thing you can do is take them out here, tell them they can't jump, and they got to get the ball to the basket with good form. All right, that, that's a good way to get a hitch out of a shot. If you have a heavy ball, uh, one of the weighted basketballs, have them shoot from the free throw line, same concept. All right, it can't, uh, the ball's too heavy to shoot with a hitch. They have to use all their energy. 
right? Uh, one thing I got from Clay Thompson, his, his shot or the thought in his head is that he wants his, his flow and his movement in his shot to be a reverse waterfall. So he's going down, as he's going up, there's water coming up through his feet, through his legs, and then out through his fingertips. At any point, if you stop or hitch in your shot, that water stops. We wanna keep that, that fluid, right? Keep that water flow uh, going. So form shooting, depends on the player how long you do that, uh, where their form's at, but they have to be consistent, okay? The next progression is just spot shooting, 15 feet, you can progress to the three-point line if their mechanics are good from 15 feet. Then you introduce shooting on the move where they have to run, uh, you know, square up, get on balance. And then the last thing is, is shooting um, off the dribble. So typically at the beginning stages, it's mostly all form shooting. Then we go to about 70% form, 30% spot. And as we get better, we kind of change those percentages and add in on the move and off the catch. Right. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. And, and, and actually teaching shooting, and as a player is like actually looking at the rim, what are you teaching the player as far as his focus, as far as that rim and apparatus? Is it's funny that you bring that up, because I just had a major discussion about that. I think as far, any, so I've experimented with back of the rim, front of the rim, eyelet. If you're shooting a free throw, I think you need to have a very specific uh, point of focus. I don't necessarily think it matters if it's front of the rim, back of the rim. I just, I haven't seen it make a big difference in, in my experience. When they're shooting, like catch and shoot, on the move, off the dribble, I, I started to wonder the same thing. So I started to ask all the really good shooters that I work with, what do you look at when you shoot? What do you look at when you shoot? And all of them said, I just shoot it, all right? And the, the thing is, when, if you're moving, okay, you're watching the ball, you're coming in, you gotta catch it, find the rim, square it up. You can't, like, you can't find like a tiny little spot and get on that. Like you gotta just trust your mechanics and just shoot the basketball if you're on the move. Free throw line, I think you have a very, cause you're stationary, you lock in and then you go. It's different for the other stuff. Anybody else? Yes sir. Um, when you're teaching mechanics on free throw shooting, um, I know you're, you guys are college, you know, college coaches mostly, but um, for high school players who are you know, just really coming into their own, what are some of the things that you have them do when uh, they're focusing on free throw shooting and uh, making it more consistent? I think the, the, uh, like the progression of like changing the form, I think that's something that transfers over to that. I mean, like for free throw shooting specifically, um, you know, alignment, and then just having good balance, like I said, that reverse waterfall where you have, you have a smooth, relaxed shot and you're on balance. Um, it obviously depends a little bit on each player's form, but I think more than just like shooting a free throw, it's just one shot in, in working their mechanics and grooving their mechanics to be consistent whatever shot they're shooting. Um, what's a good way to help kids learn to use their legs more consistently? Because what will happen when I'm coaching is I'll notice they'll focus more on their form. They won't use their lower body when their shot is occurring. So what's a good way to kind of get them to use their legs? I think emphasizing the rhythm dip is, is the biggest thing. Getting the ball to their shot pocket. When you do that, like, use the analogy. If you're going to jump as high as you can, you don't start like this and then try and go up. Your base is more narrow, you drop your hips, and then you drive up, all right? So it's the same thing with your shot, as far as when you're catching the ball, get that quick dip, and then spring up out of the floor. Another thing with that is I don't think you need, like, using leg, you have to use legs. You have to spring up and push through the floor, but you shouldn't try to, like, jump high. Each player will have a natural, you know, where they're comfortable with their jump. Some will jump higher than others. But that introduces a lot of problems with timing and like holding their release, things like that. 
think you need to jump to a point where you're comfortable and your, your shot is fluid and smooth, but the rhythm dip's the biggest thing. Um, you can take them and like have them toss it, and like as the ball's coming down, they like catch it and kind of drop and bring it to their shot pocket and then go up to introduce that, get them down. Another thing is like I said, like having them shoot farther or with a heavy ball where they need that. Because you can get, a lot, like, from close to the basket, you're working on your form. If you're strong enough, you can get by without any legs at all. So you can move them back or use the heavy ball to kind of reinforce that. All right. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, appreciate it. If you, uh, you know, if you're in the area, if you have players that you might be interested to have come work out or you want to come watch a session, Please feel free to, to call me or email me. Um, you should have a card for a free workout for somebody you can give to in your, in your packet. My email and, uh, is on there. And my phone number, if you want it, it's 414-255-6718. 414-255-6718. Any questions, players, anything, I'd be more than happy to try and help you out. Thank you.